Hello and welcome to this new video. We will build a solar node for the MeshTastic network. What we want is a self-powered node running on battery. And the battery is going to be recharged with a small compact solar panel. This solar node is meant to be installed outside and be completely autonomous and be ideally maintenance free. So we have to weatherproof it and we have to equip it with a power source that will hold long enough. It will run on battery, it will be recharged with a solar panel. Therefore, the dimensioning of the battery and the solar panel are key in this project. I have watched a few videos online about building solar nodes from specialized meshtastic uh, channels, but unfortunately, most of them make it or appear to make it difficult, or even are making what I believe are wrong statements about making it impossible with a compact solar panel to have an autonomous node. So let's try ourselves to build it and let's go to the bench. So to build a solar node, we will need a few components. First of all, we will need a case to host the electronics and the batteries. It has to be weatherproof. So the idea here is to use an electrician box, which is IP55 rating. So it is weatherproof. It contains, which is nice, rubber grommets, which allow for passing cables through and it can be easily sealed. So what is nice is that we find on the back of the case a 1 fourth inch screw holes, which allows, for example, to use such a support by screwing it simply like this. So that's easy to fix the box on a wall, a tree or some other support. A second essential component of the solar node is the battery. So the goal is to have a battery which is large enough in terms of capacity to withstand days without sun. And this is depending on your region, of course, because the solar panel will only recharge the battery during sunny days. So if you live in the north and you have bad weather, maybe for a couple of days, a few days, maybe even a week or two weeks, the battery pack has to be large enough to sustain the interval between two sunny days. So the objective is to assemble a number of battery cells so that you reach the desired capacity. In this example, we have two lithium batteries, two lithium cells, which are assembled in parallel. Each cell is 3000 milliamp hours. So the two in parallel make for a capacity of 6000 milliamp hours. How do we assemble such a pack? There are two ways to do this. Either you could simply use a standard battery holder like this. You even find individual battery holders like this with wires that you can solder together. But I would not advise this because if we take our case, we can see that the battery holder is just too big and it's inconvenient to use. It's also in terms of contact, not as good as assembling it otherwise, as I'm going to show right now. So the better method to assemble a battery pack is to use a spot welder. Obviously, this is not a very common device, but I strongly advise to use one of those. It is powered by a LiPo battery or any other DC power source. And it has two probes. The two probes will connect a circuit and the electrical current between the two probes will make a spot weld between a nickel strip, as shown here. That's what a nickel strip looks like. It's a small piece of nickel, quite flexible, and that allows for connecting cells together by spot welding them. I will show a small clip on how to do this. So here I'm fixing the batteries together. I will zoom in with the camera a little bit. There we go. And so the idea is to spot weld this nickel strip on these two poles, the two positive poles, and we will do the same afterwards on the negative poles. So we position the probe number one on one area. We have to put some pressure on it so that the contact is right. And we place the second one next to it. You do the same on the second one. Uh, 
There we go. The advantage of using such an assembled battery pack is that it remains quite compact and then it fits easily into the case. You could increase the capacity easily up to four cells. In my own tests with four batteries, a solar node has lasted more than two months without any recharging. So that's quite efficient. Okay, so another component that we need is obviously a mesh plastic board. For this project, we will use a rack wireless board for different reasons. First of all, this is the least consuming board that you can get on the market today because it uses a special chip which is not as power consuming as the ESP32 of the LTEC V3 boards. That's the first point. The second point is that it contains a solar connector which is meant specifically for recharging the battery which is connected on the battery port and it contains the internal circuitry to manage the solar charging of the battery with a number of protections. So that's a very good board for this project. We will maintain the Bluetooth antenna which is provided by default but as you know from the previous videos we will use a homemade dipole antenna for its efficiency and in order to use such an antenna instead of the factory PCB antenna we need then to use a pigtail, an SMA pigtail, which will connect here with the IPEX connector to the antenna connector. And this part will go through the box. A hole will be done into the box to stick that connector out. And this will allow then the connection of the dipole antenna. So in order to connect a solar panel to this little connector, you obviously need to buy some pigtails on Amazon, for example, which are specifically made for that small, tiny connector. Beware of the polarity of that connector. On the board itself, you will see a plus and a minus. The plus is obviously the red wire and the minus is the black wire. Be careful that when buying such pigtails, the polarity is not standard. So do not reverse the plus and the minus. So how are we going to connect now the solar panel to this board and what kind of solar panel are we going to use? We will use uh, such a solar, solar panel which is found also on Amazon for very cheap. This is a 6 watt solar panel with a capacity of a few hundred milliamp of current. It has on the back also a standard screw hole to mount it on a support. So there would be theoretically two ways to use this solar panel with the board. Either by connecting directly the USB connector onto the board like this, it might work, but better would be to connect directly this cable to the solar input of the board. How are we going to do this? We also have two ways to do this. Either we cut the USB connector part and we connect directly the two wires plus and minus to the connector eventually using soldering it to the pigtail that's one solution the other solution is to use another method thanks to such a little board it will expose the plus and minus so you can solder such a wire directly to it connect it to the board but you retain the USB connector of the solar panel in case you have to re reuse it for another project and you don't want to cut the connector. So that's what we're going to do. We are going to solder the pigtail to this little board and we will connect that to the rack wireless board. Let's take the soldering equipment. We could actually shorten the pigtail, it doesn't need to be so long, but we have enough room in the case, so that's not an issue. So let's pre in. Okay, so the soldering is done. We can put that aside. So now let's see how we can install the board inside this case. It would be ideally placed like this with an opening on the top to eventually access the USB connector if need be. And to fix the board inside the case on the bottom, we will use a 3D printed adapter. 
So let's uh, show this 3D printed adapter. I show the STL file on screen. This adapter will be double-sided taped on the bottom of the case. So we're done with the printing. Here's the 3D printed part, which will be used as a baseboard to fix the board inside the case. So that's what it looks like. What we need to do now is to drill the holes at the different locations. The first location shall be the antenna to avoid flexing the cables too much. Uh, it is a good thing to drill the hole for the pigtail in this corner so that it can be attached to the IPEX connector of the board, still keeping a bending angle which is low enough, which is small enough not to damage the coax cable. So there will be a mark to open a hole for the SMA connector. That's one. So a second hole has to be made into the rubber grommet to pass the USB cable of the solar panel. The position of the hole, since we have the possibilities all around the case, has to be chosen so that the cable comes from the bottom once the case is fixed onto its support. Okay, so now we are going to drill the holes into the case. For this, we will mark the best positions. For the antenna, we will drill a hole in this area, more or less. That's where the SMA connector will go through. The board itself shall be placed on that side. So that would be an opening around here if we want to. It's not an obligation to access the USB port. And uh, since the antenna has to be held vertically for vertical polarization, so I show you what I mean. The antenna has to be held in this position. This means that the case shall be held in that position vertically on its support. So that means it's in, on the other side that the solar cable has to come through. So we shall make it come in through this grommet or eventually this grommet is also an alternative possibility. So we have the entrance for the USB cable for the solar panel. We have a hole for the SMA connector for the pigtail and an optional hole for access to the USB connector of the board itself. So I'll drill the holes and I'm coming back when it's finished. Back to the bench. We've made a hole here with that tool, which is quite easy because it drills quite easily in plastic. It allows you to make very clean holes and it will fit the SMA connector. So here we go. That's the first hole that has been done for the antenna and the SMA connector is ready to be fixed to the board. But let's talk about the second hole, which has been done on this side so that the box will be held vertically and the USB cable will come through the bottom and that allows to have a very tight fit which shall be waterproof as can be shown here you see how the the rubber molds the cable itself and here we go and this USB connector is then ready to connect through the little adapter we, we've made previously to connect to the board.